capitals of the world, members of the American diplomatic and consulate service are stationed to protect the interests and property of our citizens. But equally important are the representatives who serve in out-of-the-way places of the world where headlines are seldom made. Such a place is Biaka in the Far East, on a day when trouble looms. if you would continue dictating the notes you started yesterday. I'd like to finish them before I leave tonight. Oh? All right, sit down. You see, I won't be here tomorrow. Well, the election. You want the day off? You don't mind? Of course not. You know American policy, no interference in local political affairs. Now, what was the last thing I said? Attention, Rangoon. Regarding the political developments in this area, Regarding political developments in this area, I have prepared a list of all American technical personnel and families for possible evacuation from the oil fields should the situation get out of hand. However, to evacuate prematurely might serve to encourage Ho Chung's forces of intimidation in the elections tomorrow. You consider it a good likeness? Mr. Ho Chung. No, I don't think it does you justice. <laughs> Somewhat uh, formidable, no? You are not worried for the safety of the American oil workers, Mr. Connors? Why should I be? Mm, tempers in elections sometimes get hot. Even violent. Well, it's very considerate of you to warn me. But I'm sure everything will come off peacefully. It will never go peacefully, Mr. Connors. So long as my people are under the yoke of foreign imperialists. Oh, come now. You don't really believe that, Mr. Chun. I don't have to believe it. As long as the people believe it. These, I take it, are your campaign managers? Friends only. I have many friends you know, Mr. Connors. Well, as we say in my country, may the best man win. Sweetheart, how's tricks? My Emma's gone away. Oh, she has? She's not coming back. Oh, that's too bad. And what's your mommy doing? She's in the kitchen with the bug shooter. <laughs> you know, if we don't run out of DDT, your mother may win a decision yet. Hello, darling. I'm Emma, glad you're home. Hey, Rexy, come on. Run along play in your room. Your daddy and I want to talk a minute. All right, but I told Daddy my Emma's gone. She's right, Ed. She is gone. So is Ling Sang. They both quit today. Oh, well, there's no particular calamity. You know, Ling Sang wasn't much of a cook, and the nurse had to be told everything six times before she got it. I know, but it's why they quit, dear. Some of Ho Chung's men told them they had to stop working for us or else. Well, Miss Lu must have quit, too. Your secretary? Yeah, I thought she just wanted tomorrow off. You know, Ed, I'm worried. Ho Chung's acting like this. The other party's not going to like it. There's going to be rioting, isn't there? Police will be there to keep order. I'll get it done. Hello? Oh, yes, he's here. It's the airfield. Connor speaking. Uh, privately owned? How far out are they? Yeah, give them landing structures. I'll be right down. Some plane bound for Salon has engine trouble, and they're putting in here at our airfield. Americans? Yep. Now, well, they sure picked a fine time to arrive. Oh, it'll be nice to see some new American faces around here. It sure will. The only thing is, with trouble brewing, it might complicate things. You are worried, aren't you? 
Well, this isn't exactly an election back home. Sit down, Tom. All that pacing just stirs up the air and makes it hotter. I was wondering what was holding up Saunders. He should have had that engine fixed by now. This heat, brother, this heat. Yeah, take another salt pill. Well, I finally found the trouble all right, Mr. Carver. Oh? I have to pull the whole carburetor assembly. That's about a six to eight hour job. Goodbye, Salon. Well, now, wait a minute, maybe not. How far from here to Salon? Well, about 2,000 miles. Can you get us out of here by, say, six in the morning? Well, yeah, I think we can make it. Okay, good. Hop to it, huh? Half a night in this hot house. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm Connors, resident of American Vice Council. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Well, I'm Kennedy. This is Tom Carver, Carver Construction Engineers. How do you do? Well, I've heard of you, Mr. Carver. Welcome to Bianca, both of you. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Connors. I wish I could say it was a pleasure, but I can't. You see, I'm doing Salon tomorrow to bid in a very important construction job. The plane I chartered is laid up for repairs. Oh, that's too bad, sir. I think it'll work out. But since we do have to spend some time here, just to where would you suggest? Well, I'd suggest my place. It's safest. Safest? And the cleanest. Jello. I hope you won't mind my taking you a roundabout way. There's a sort of demonstration in the oil fields and in the bazaar. It might be difficult to get through the streets. A demonstration? It's election eve. Oh, pretty big celebration, I bet. Very big. Thank you. And you think there's liable to be trouble at the polls? Well, there's a local fellow, Ho Chung, trying strong arm methods to win the election. He's based his entire platform, if you can call it that, on a campaign against foreign influence. You know, slogans like um, foreigners go home, foreigners bring bad luck. Yeah, I know. It's the old standby. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these people know better. They don't like being pushed around. It might lead to rioting at the polls. What time do the polls open? Just after sunup. The idea being to give people a chance to vote before it gets uncomfortably hot. Hot? You mean the weather? Oh, Mr. Yorhart. Mrs. Connors, so glad I found you. One of the children is very sick. Can you come, please? Well, of course, Mr. Yorhart. Hello, Mr. Yorhart. Did I hear you say one of the children wasn't feeling well? Yes, sir. Have you called the doctor? The doctor went away up river somewhere. No one is sure which village he's in, even. Keep an eye on Lexi, will you, darling? I won't be gone long. Well, don't you think I should go with you? Mm. I'm the one that studied nursing, remember? You stay with your guests. Besides, probably nothing serious anyway. Be careful. Promise not to catch anything. Excuse me. Well, gentlemen, you probably heard. I'm sorry my wife has to go out for a while. Well, shall we help ourselves? <laughs> Good idea. You figure, Mr. Connors, if this Ho-Chung does get in, he'll just seize everything? That'd be my bet. I'm glad I'm just an accountant. I don't have to bother my head with politics. You see, Mr. Kennedy, you have stake in this election, too. How's that? Well, the strong men like Ho-Chung are sort of closing in on us, one way or another. Free elections, as we know them, have a way of disappearing. You know, even in a little out-of-the-way place like this, an election is vital to all of us. Because the forces of freedom have to win all of the elections. He's saying, Frank, that if they lose one, they'll never get another chance in that place. Because there'll never be another free election. Right, Mr. Connor? That's right. Well, what about your charming wife? Aren't you a little worried about her with the election scare and all? I'm scared to death. But Pat's as much a part of this job as I am. You see, it's her whole life. While I was preparing for the consulate service, Pat was learning as much as she could about nursing. Excuse me. Hello. Oh, Pat, I'm so glad you called. I was getting worried. You know, it's been over three hours. I'm sorry, darling, but this looks more serious than I thought. Mr. Yorhat says it isn't just one child, either. He says there's several others with the same symptoms. What is it? Well, I'm not sure. Not absolutely sure, that is. Can you come over, darling, right away? Mr. Yorhat's residence, can you? Of course. I'll be there in a few minutes. Well, I'm going to have to leave you gentlemen alone for a while. My wife has her hands full with some sick children. Sure, you go right ahead. Oh, by the way, my little girl's asleep in the front room. Don't worry, we'll take care of her. Thank you. Oh, uh, 
I hope it isn't anything serious. Oh, it's probably some local virus. You see? Neck's pretty stiff. Well, and the arm is weak, too. She's been complaining about a headache. There's some slight fever, nausea, vomiting. The point is, Ed, there are eight other children that have the same symptoms. Well, what does that mean? Well, it looks... looks like polio to me. Polio? I wish the doctor were here. But, Pat, these children were given polio vaccine three or four months ago. No, some of the families refused to cooperate, remember? That's right. But are all these children in the same category? Yes, Ed, they are. Don't you have any vaccine left? Well, plenty. But for these nine children, it's too late if they have it. Oh, no. But you're not sure? No, I'm not sure. I may just be overly conscious of it. But if I am right, these children have to be hospitalized at once. There's only one hospital in the Orient that's adequately equipped for this. Where? Manila. Oh, why your phone? Certainly. Would you like some tea also? Tea? Uh, yeah. Uh, get me the residence of the American Consul, please. Uh, hello, may I speak to... Oh, is this you, Mr. Carver? Uh, this is Saunders. I got lucky. I found the trouble sooner than I expected. We're all set for takeoff. Yes, sir, I will. Tea. Thanks. Oh, there you are. Mr. Carver needs transportation out here to the field. Our plane's fixed. I want a radio manila. Yes, Mr. Carver, sir. Mandalay. Biaka calling Manila. What's up? Biaka calling We've got Manila. got some sick children. Need to confirm what it is and find out if they can accommodate them. Pat, you tell the operator what you want to say. I have Manila. What is your message, please? Tell him to get a doctor over to the radio room. Attention, Manila. Have a doctor stand by. Manila, have a doctor stand by. sign of Connors. I wonder where he is. Hey, give me the airfield, please. Hello, Saunders. Connors. Well, what are you doing there? Look, what's holding us up? Uh, we're in a hurry. We're, there's no transportation available to the airfield. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Do the best I can. The old man steaming. This one guy doesn't like to wait. Hold a moment, please. Here's the message. Your description of symptoms and general circumstances would indicate you are correct. Would advise prompt hospitalization for observation. We can accommodate nine if necessary. Your reply, please. You heard what it said. There's no available plane here but yours. Will you fly the children in Manila? I've leased my plane to Carver. He stands to lose a minute if he isn't in Ceylon tomorrow. The children, it's their only chance. Are you sure? We'll have a doctor meet the plane at Bangkok. He can diagnose there. Then if it isn't polio, you can come right back. What is your reply, please? I can't hold it much longer. Look, I can't promise, but I'll see what I can do about expenses. All the heck with it. I'll do it. Good. Reply as follows. Nurse, nine children leaving here within 30 minutes. Anticipate arrival via Bangkok. Average airspeed of plane is... 200. 200. That's all. Now, look, we've got to get a truck, round up all those set children, and come back in 30 Listen, minutes, okay? Yes, sir. There's nine children leaving here in 30 minutes. Thanks, Anticipate Sorry. arrival via Bangkok. Over. This is the last one, Ed. Let's get going. By the way, I called Carver. I told him what was up. He was furious. I'm sorry to hear that. I'll talk to him when we get back. Please, he cannot go without me. Let me come also. I, too, have nurses' training. 
I can help look after the others. You say you're a trained nurse? Yes, I was with the British forces here during the wartime. If you're a trained nurse, why didn't you have your own child vaccinated? My husband. <gasps> Never mind, I understand. She can take my place, don't you think so, yeah. Ed? Oh, thank you. Thank you. My plane take off? Yes. Saunders told you the emergency. He most certainly did. He said that you'd persuaded him to break his contract with me and you sent my plane to Manila. You know that I have to be in Salon tomorrow and you send my plane in the opposite direction. Well, didn't he explain about the children? Mrs. Connors, I know all about the children. But why on earth couldn't they have gone to Salon with me? You see, sir, if it's what we think it is, they just don't have the adequate facilities in Salon. What you think it is? It's just the point. You don't know. Why, for all you know, those children may just have flu or a local bug or even just a tummy ache. But if I am right and they have polio and they went to Salon, that could be mass murder, Mr. Carver. Pat, that's a pretty strong statement, Mrs. Connors. Are you trying to tell us the hospital at Salon isn't any good? Well, it's good, but it's just not adequately equipped to save nine cases of polio. Only Manila is. Connors, what your wife says about the children may or may not be correct. But if it isn't correct, the State Department is going to hear about it. That's all I have to say, sir. And... Well, I couldn't sleep either, huh? Mm -mm. Well, one thing. At least Ho Chung didn't drive us out. No. But maybe I did. Oh, I don't say that. Don't even think it. Besides, we can both take credit for the decision. We both know it was right. In the cold light of dawn, all I can seem to think of are the consequences. Consequences? You know what Carver said last night about telling the State Department. It's not going to help my career any. Oh, now, you don't really believe that. Besides, the State Department will back you on this, I'm sure. After all, you merely persuaded Saunders. It was his decision. Uh, Carver seems to think I talked Saunders into it. You know, he may lose a lot of money not being in Salon today. Mm, well, weigh that against the lives of nine children and see what kind of an answer you get. Anyway, darling, it was a race against time. You did the only thing you could. I hope so, Pat. Anyway, it's done. Now, how about some coffee, huh? That's a good idea. I'll fix it. The airport, please. Hello. You standing by that radio? Yes. No word yet, huh? No. Okay. Call me the minute you're here. Yes, I will. That's just making some. Any news yet? No. Uh, Connor's about last night. I, uh, I think I got a little bit loud. I, uh, thinking about it. As a result, I didn't sleep very well. I'm sorry. No, you're not. 
That isn't the point. The point is... Would you get another cup there? Mr. Carver didn't sleep either. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kennedy, too? Oh, no. He's in there sleeping like a baby. Uh, you were saying, Mr. Carver? Oh, just that... All oh, after all, Connors, I am in your bailiwick. I, uh, whatever you say goes, no matter what. I should have realized that last night. You know, I owe you both an apology. Those things I said to you, oh, it's foolish. Even if it turns out those kids have no more than a stomach ache from eating green apples, you did right. The only thing you could do, so did Bob Saunders. Thank you, sir. I am sorry about your business deal in Salon, though. <laughs> Forget it. There'll be other deals, maybe even better ones. What's so interesting out there? Oh, the election's already begun. The polling place is right across the street. Oh. I thought you said there was going to be trouble. You know, I've seen more action than that in Peoria on election day. I don't understand it. I was sure there'd be some kind of a demonstration. Possibly even a riot. Maybe there isn't going to be any trouble. Spoke too soon. Here comes Mr. Trouble in person. He's coming in to see us. I am alone, Mr. Connors. I come in good faith. Come in. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry to intrude. Why do you come? Purely selfish motives. Have you heard if the airplane arrived safely? We have no news as yet. Why are you so interested, Mr. Ho Chung? I have my reasons. I'm sure you have. I suppose you intend to make political capital out of this foreign imperialism again? Mr. Connors, I... Yes. Thank you. They had a doctor waiting at Bangkok. He made examinations and confirmed polio before the plane took off again from Manila. That, your quick actions probably saved those children's lives. Thank heaven you took that action. Thank you. That's the information you wanted, Mr. Ho Chung. But I don't understand. Mrs. What... Connors, does this mean the children will be all right? Well, I can't promise that, Mr. Ho Chung. At least you know they'll have every chance they can. Then I'm most grateful. And to you, Mr. Connors. You see, the woman in the plane is my wife. Her little boy is my son. I'm glad we could help you out, Mr. Ho Chung. Tell me, does this have any connection with the peaceful scene at the poles? You might say that, Mr. Connors. In fact, you might say when that plane took off last night, I lost the election. Good day, Mrs. Connors. Gentlemen. You know something, Ed? I think I owe you more than an apology. Oh, see, I forgot to tell you. The airport told me there's a plane due here in an hour en route to Salon, if that's any help. Hmm. You know, ever since I got here, I've been trying to figure what a bright young man like you is doing way off here in the middle of nowhere. Well, now I know. Morning, Miss Lou. Now, let's see. What's on the calendar for today? Here is the morning mail. And here are the finished reports you requested from Washington. The two men are waiting to inquire about visas. You have seen a day in the life of a man in your diplomatic and consulate service. A service which belongs to Americans everywhere. And of which they can be most proud. This story was based on fact. Thank you.